Welcome everyone. I want to start off this video by specifically saying that no, AI will not take away your critical thinking skills. I felt a big need to create this video because I saw multiple news articles out there talking about how there's this new research that came out from Carnegie Mellon and Microsoft working together and they've identified that, hey, if you use AI, you're going to lose all of your critical thinking skills. So of course, that's quite a bit uh, uh, grandiose and it's a bit of confirmation bias with uh, some of the ways that they're expressing their, their titles and their information. So I wanted to create this video to try and explain things a bit more and to really get at the importance of what's going on here, because there are some very serious issues that is important for us to think about when we talk about critical thinking and AI. Because if you remember, having critical thinking is a major, major part of overall AI literacy, right? It's one of the four components. So yes, we want to make sure that we developed critical thinking and we have to understand, well, what is AI doing with that regard? So I'm going to go over the actual research talk about what it was all about, and then identify different aspects as far as what we need to do in academia to ensure that we're properly developing critical thinking. To begin with, the research in question is this article that's called The Impact of Generative AI on Critical Thinking, Self-Reported Reductions in Cognitive Effort and Confidence Effects from a Survey of Knowledge Workers. This was put together by work from Carnegie Mellon University as well as Microsoft Research. And this was published directly from Microsoft. To begin with, I wanted to ensure that we are talking about the same thing. So let's look at how they define critical thinking. They stated that we adopt the definition of critical thinking developed by Bloom et al., a hierarchical taxonomy that characterizes student learning objectives into six types, knowledge, recall of idea, comprehension, demonstrating understanding of ideas, application, putting ideas into practice, analysis, contrasting and relating ideas, synthesis, combining ideas, and evaluation, judging ideas through criteria. So that's important to have this overall idea of how they're defining critical thinking. And they're defining it into these different categories as far as what someone goes through when they are thinking critically. And, and that plays out with everything that they did within this research. So that was their definition of critical thinking. But I also want to highlight this other section. And this is something that I take issue with because I don't agree with. They state that over-reliance defined as users accepting incorrect recommendations, i.e. making errors of commission, is closely re related to the lack of critical thinking. So I take issue with that because that isn't a, a well-defined aspect of over-reliance. In fact, that's not how it's usually used. Over-reliance simply means that I am using the AI and I'm not even going to critically analyze what it's doing. Whether it's giving me correct information or false information is irrelevant because I'm simply over relying on it, meaning that I'm not taking the time to critically analyze. That is the real definition of over reliance. And we, we already had this, right? Because when GPT 4 came out, that's when there was a technical paper released by OpenAI that expressed this. They brought it up to our attentions. Their scientists directly said, hey, there could be a, a, a real issue here with over reliance on AI meaning that as it gets better and better, people are going to over rely on AI to the point where they might lose skills or they might not gain new skills. So that's important to, to keep in mind here. And I'll come back to this because this is an important aspect when we're talking about critical thinking as well. So I'm not gonna bury the lead and I'm gonna go specifically to the results here that say specifically higher confidence in generative AI is associated with less critical thinking, while higher self-confidence is associated with more critical thinking. So that makes sense and it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Meaning that if I have low confidence in my capabilities and the AI gives me some sort of answer, well then I'm gonna be more confident in what it says because I don't have a lot of self-confidence in my capabilities. Whereas if I have a lot of self-confidence, well then I will do more critical thinking. I'll use my own mind more than simply what the AI tells me. So that makes logical sense. But let's see more about what are the overall findings from this research. So for this research, it's important to understand that this is self-reported aspects of using generative AI tools 
in work. They went through and asked 319 participants, from which they got 936 examples. 374 related to creation, 303 related to information, and 259 related to advice, dealing with their interactions with generative AI. And from that, the participants self-reported that they enacted critical thinking 555 times, meaning 59.29%, which is most of the time. So that's important to remember as well. So their findings were that knowledge workers, confidence in AI doing the task indeed negatively correlates with their inaction of critical thinking. But they also found that knowledge workers' confidence in doing the task themselves and evaluating AI responses both positively correlate with their inaction of critical thinking. Another big part here is that knowledge workers' overall tendency to reflect on their work had a positive effect. This suggests that knowledge workers who already engage in critical thinking in their work are likely to continue doing so even when using generative AI tools. Did you get that last part? That's really important. So if we properly teach students to develop critical thinking and they have this capability and then they're properly trained also in their work to use critical thinking, then they're most likely going to continue to do that. It's only when people, students don't have critical thinking skills and they, are get, they get this tool and they don't know how to use it, well, now they have problems with critical thinking and they might lose that capability altogether. So that's an important aspect here. Training, once again, becomes super important. Our, our work as educators has to understand this, that we have to develop critical thinking within our students so that they have this capability wherever they go, whether that's into research, into some sort of organization, or in the workforce. This is going to be an important aspect. Develop critical thinking and then maintain that so that they can always be using the AI to enhance their capabilities. Now. I also want to hit on another aspect of this, right? Is that so we we understand now from this research that hey, if I have confidence in what I'm doing, if I know my information, I know my field, well then I'll be using critical thinking properly. Where if I don't know my field, but I think that the AI is smart and correct, well then I'll probably just sort of off put my my cognitive capabilities, cognitive outsourcing if you will, to the AI so that it can answer it because I'm not confident. So we understand those things. Now we understand that, okay, so we have to develop the person's ability to know their field. So they have to be subject matter experts. And then on top of that, they need to know how to use the AI appropriately. And remember part of critical thinking is this understanding that, hey, it's not gonna be uh, perfect in every time. So that means that I need to verify. And in fact, that's what they also identified here within this research is that there's this shift, this changing of what people need to do generally when they're using the AI. So they still need to be using their critical thinking, but a lot of that shifts in different ways. So here's what they say. They state that critical thinking in knowledge work involves a range of cognitive activities such as analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. We observe that the use of generative AI tools shifts the knowledge workers' perceived critical thinking efforts in three ways. Specifically, for recalling and comprehension, the focus shifts from information gathering to information verification. For application, the emphasis shifts from problem solving to AI response integration. Lastly, for analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, effort shifts from task execution to task stewardship. So those are all important aspects of what someone needs to do, right? This shifting, I'm not gonna spend all my time gathering all this information, and instead I'm going to verify information of what's coming in. Now, it's still beneficial for me to know some aspects of where can I go, because if this information isn't good, well then I can go and get additional information. So I still need to be a subject matter expert in my field to know how to go through the process, but I need to focus more on different things because I'm shifting, right? Because I'm going from, from one focus to another focus. It's still critical thinking, but I need to have more critical thinking on some other aspects. Now, for that, I want to give you sort of uh, another analogy, another way to, to look at it. So an example here. Let's talk about having a simple cutting tool, 
right? So in the past, long ago, we would need to use a, a tool like this, right? This is a sharp rock. So I would use this sharp rock in order to cut things. Let's say I needed to cut some vegetables or cut some, some hunting. Uh, you know, I just finished a, a hunting, so I needed to, to cut up my, my, my food. So I would use something like this. But now let's say that instead of having to use that, now I have this tool, right? So in case you don't know, this is a multi-tool, right? There's a Gerber multi-tool, kind of like a Swiss army knife in that it's got all sorts of different things. There's uh, different sort of uh, blades and knives in here and different tools. You see how it has pliers right here. So this is a brand new tool that greatly surpasses this, right? As far as for what we want to do. Now, if I just now focus on this and like, well, now I have this cutting tool, I don't need to think about this type of tool anymore. Well, if I do that, I'm going to lose a lot of capabilities as far as now I won't, I'll start to forget as far as what, what type of rock should I use? Um, what am I, what uh, characteristics am I looking for in this sharp rock in order to have the good type of tool that I need to create maybe a cutting ax or to create a knife out of this? Uh, and how do I even break this down so I can form it into the right way? I'm going to lose all that capability. I won't have that anymore. Why? Because now I'm using this. So I lost that capability. I lost that knowledge and that the functionality of how to do that because now I, I have this. But this is so much of a better tool in that I can cut so much finer. I can, uh, it's easier to clean. It can do so much more, but I lost that other capability. So now in the same way, we have to think about that as far as critical thinking and even over-reliance, right? We have to make a purposeful decision as to, oh, okay, well, I'm going to get rid of these skills that I have that were very important dealing with rock and selection and creating of that because I don't need it anymore because now I have this other tool that I'm going to be using. Now we have to be purposeful with this because we don't want to get rid of important skills that we still need in order to be able to do much more. But now with a more advanced tool, I will be able to do so much more and I can focus on other things that will allow me to do so many other things. So that's the key thing that we have to understand here is that Yes, when we start to use AI tools, we might be losing some skills, but we have to be able to identify that so we can decide, okay, that's okay. It's okay to let go of that skill. Or no, you know what? We definitely don't want to lose that skill. So we need to make sure that we understand how we can change the process or we can modify the tool even so that we maintain this skill. Now, this is doubly important for us in academia because we have to make those decisions as well as to, well, when do I want my students to use AI? It might not be all the time. I want them to develop foundational knowledge on certain things, and then we can introduce a more advanced tool so that they can then use the AI to achieve so much more. The, the analogy that we love to use, right, is the calculator. Who, who among us can still do long division? Very few of us, right? But that used to be an important skill that you had to have in school in order to be able to understand math. Well, I still understand math, I don't know how to do really long division or really complicated multiplication in my head. Now I use a tool like a calculator and I'm able to do more advanced math in that way because I'm focusing on this aspect as opposed to these fundamentals that I still understand the base knowledge of how that works, but you see how the shift is occurring there. I let go of one skill in order to be able to use a tool to do so much more over here. That's an important part. And the big thing is though, that with this research, it's, it's telling us what we knew already, right? What, what came out with the, the, uh, the, the paper from, from OpenAI, even before that, talking about over-reliance, in that we could lose some critical thinking skills, but it's not the AI's fault, right? It's the person choosing how to use the tool, because if they're not doing more, if they're not changing their focus and now using critical thinking somewhere else, and they're just letting something else do all the thinking for them, well then, yeah, sure. I mean, it's the same thing as just watching TV all day or just scrolling TikTok all day, right? If you're not purposely using your mind, well then, yeah, of course, you're going to lose some capabilities, but that's, re that's regardless of, of, what, of what tool you're using. It isn't AI that's causing that. It's you that's making choices and decisions as to what to do and how to develop yourself. So this is something that we have to ensure that we are 
helping our students to develop do that through developing their AI literacy, by talking about these things, by helping them to see the importance here, and by making sure that they understand what they need to be focusing on. Things like, hey, if I'm using AI, I still need to verify, I still need to check, I still need to be thinking, okay, it gave me an answer. It's not the only answer. I still need to ensure that I'm fully developing creativity and I can work with the AI to come up with additional answers of to bounce ideas off of it. So again, the critical thinking is still there, but we still have to teach the students to develop this. Just like anything, even before AI, people were losing critical thinking skills because they didn't think. So we have to help to develop that, give them this mindset of developing critical thinking, critical analysis, so that they continue to develop that even with the AI and for the betterment, because now with AI, we can do so much more. So this is what I wanted to be sure to cover today in that we're going to be getting more and more of this type of research that comes out there, but we can't use that just for confirmation bias of what we might think. We need to be sure that we're fully reading the article, not just the headlines of some news article that's referring to something, but really looking through and understanding what it's telling us. Because even that article itself made that statement that knowledge workers who already engage in critical thinking in their work are likely to continue doing so even when using generative AI. So that's the message that I want to leave you with, that we have to develop AI literacy, we have to develop critical thinking within our students now so that they can continue to do so even after graduation, when they get to their organizations, when they, are, they get to their job, they do their research, they're still going to be able to have that skill and apply it wherever they go, even though they're using AI, and that'll be enhanced so much more. And remember that learning is for life. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you watching. Please like and share. Be sure to subscribe, and I'm looking forward to reading all of your comments.